Okay, everyone, it's time to move on to another topic within the umbrella of immersive writing. So drawing your reader into your world and into your story as deeply as you can. So the first thing that I would like you to do is to choose one of the following tasks, depending on how you're feeling today. So I'd either like you to make notes about a time when you felt afraid, or I'd like you to make notes about a time when you felt triumphant, i.e. that you'd had some great success in something that was very important to you. Regardless of which chat task you choose, I would like you to split your notes into three columns, really. So you might want to do that in your notebook or across a Word document if you're working on a computer. I'd like you to split your notes into physical reactions. So what was going on in your body when you, when you were afraid or you had success? Did your temperature rise? Did your pupils dilate? Uh, were you smiling a lot? You, <laughs> what, was, what was the scenario in terms of your body, your physiology? Okay. The second column is emotional reactions. So the feelings that gushed out. Okay. So those are usually one word things, but they might be expressed in a few words. You know, it felt like the saddest thing that had ever happened to me or that, you know, it felt like it was a fear I'd never felt before, or it was an elation I'd never felt before, whatever it was. Um, you might express that in just a few words. Try and list as many of them as you can, but once you're done, you know, you're done because there's only so many ways in which you can write about fear and triumph, you know, in different kind of language. So just just highlight the key emotions that were coming out at the time. Um, and then I would like you to think about intellectual reactions. So what was going on in your mind? What thoughts did you have? An example of a thought when you're afraid might be there's no way out of this. What am I going to do? those kind of thoughts. A thought about when you're triumphant might be something like, I can't believe this, is, this has happened. I've done it. Finally, I've achieved this. That kind of a thought, okay, whatever it might be. People are gonna be so proud, that kind of thing, all right? So I'm gonna give you just two minutes now to make some notes. And if you can't think of a specific time in your life where you were either afraid or triumphant, then you can think across the course of your life. When you're afraid, how do you generally react in that scenario? And the same with triumph, when you win something or you succeed at something, how does your body, how do you feel in your body? What kind of things happen in your mind and what kind of things happen in your heart, emotionally speaking? So we're going to interrogate our own physiology, our own intellect when it comes to our response and our own emotions in this particular task. So we'll just get, get two minutes now and your time of writing starts right now.
just have another 30 seconds. And if you've got any columns that are empty, now's the time to just put a few things in there. So you've got something across all three columns. You're not going to be asked to share any of this. So you can be as honest as you want to be. Okay, that is time on that piece of writing. So what we did there was we started um, working on the principle that you may have heard in creative writing, which is to write what you know. Writing what you know will take you a significant distance, particularly in the beginning of your writing career. But what you find is the more you write, the more you want to take imaginative leaps in what you're doing. The more you want to explore new territory, push boundaries in the kind of writing you're doing and explore things that are important to people beyond your immediate circle. So we're, this particular exercise we're going to do next is about pushing yourself beyond what you know. It is about immersing the reader in a story, even when that story is the most ridiculous thing they may ever have heard in their entire life. I have written some pretty ridiculous stories in my time. <laughs> I don't mind saying it because it brought the readers a great deal of joy. But the way that I did it and the way that I took them along was through that principle of emotional truth. So I gave them a ridiculous scenario that would never happen in real life. But within that, I wove emotional truth that I knew I had felt or thought in my own journey. So I may never have uh, stopped aliens from invading the planet, um, but I do know what it means like it feels like to meet a great challenge and overcome it so I can weave that emotional truth through those things okay this is getting to the point folks where people ask me because i write murder mysteries uh, have you ever solved a murder <laughs> no <laughs> i would be terrible at that i don't even know who's done it on columbo and they show you that at the beginning so i just think that you if you can embed this emotional truth then it really does help you to bring the reader along with you and they just invest in your writing so I'm going to give you a couple of story scenarios, depending on whether or not you chose fear or triumph. And I'm going to ask you to weave the notes or fictionalized versions of the notes you've just written through the scenario to try and make it feel as real and believable as possible. Even though I'm going to give you some very unbelievable things to write about. So if you chose fear, I would like you to imagine that you are a character who discovered a secret door in your local branch of Lidl to a magical land where dragons still exist, okay? And the people in that land see you as a savior who's been sent to slay the dragon and stop them all being eaten by it or scorched by it, depending on what the dragon is feeling like that day. So you are going to bring us in at the moment where your character comes eye to eye with that fire breathing dragon. And maybe you've got only magic and swords to help you overcome that challenge. You're from our world. This is not something you're used to. And you're looking at a deadly creature that you don't know how to slay. OK, so that's where you're going to bring us in. You can write it. In the first person, you can write it as a poem, you can write it in the third person, you can write it as a script. I'm not going to dictate how you write it, but I want you to bring in that emotional truth. I want to know how that character feels in their body, how they are thinking and how they feel in their heart, okay, through the course of your piece of writing. If you chose triumph, well, congratulations, because you are going to bring us in. You are going to be a character who has just managed to successfully disarm a bomb that was going to kill thousands of people whilst a gun was pointed at your head. And in successfully disarming that bomb, 
for reasons that were not totally clear on but were explained in the exposition, you've also deterred an alien invasion. So Earth is safe both, you know, far and wide, Earth is safe. In short, you're a character in a Nicolas Cage movie, okay? Or in several Nicolas Cage movies smushed together. So um, that's who you are. And I want to feel that triumph, body, mind, heart, when you disarm that bomb. The stakes are high and you don't want to be letting anyone down, okay? So hopefully you can remember about half of the scenario I gave you at least. And you wanted to have a go at just trying some creative writing and imagining yourself in that space. I'm going to give you um, three minutes again just to start something, see what comes out of the pen. Let's have a bit of fun and let's see if we can actually make someone believe in this scenario. OK, three minutes. Off you go. Okay, that is about time on that activity. Again, if you've gone somewhere really interesting with this, make a note for yourself uh, so that you can pursue it later. I must admit, I did enjoy all your really serious faces writing about those absolutely ridiculous scenarios that I just gave you. It was brilliant. It was gold. Just watching how serious you all were. I could have done that all afternoon very happily. <laughs> so thank you for that. It was great. Okay. I'd love to see that such silliness that I dish out is being taken so seriously. So Phyllis, would you mind unmuting and just uh, letting us know which task you chose? And maybe would you be happy to read us a few sentences or a little bit more if you're happy to? 
Um, okay, can you hear me? I can hear okay. you. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. So which um, is the task that you chose? Uh, I chose fear. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, should I tell you the, the, the fear story that I was working from or not? You absolutely can if you want to, or you can just delve into the story, whatever you wish. Okay, um, so my fear story was um, I was on a beach with my son and he got caught in, in a riptide and I had to oh. go in and swim after him. Um, yes. So that would be terrifying. So the dragon is kind of a. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the, waves, the dragon. It? The dragons is the waves. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Well, well, it's a great parallel, but how frightening for you. Um, but yes, he's fine. Let's take it. He's, he's fine. okay. It's good. Okay. <laughs> uh, just a trip to Little. What could be easier than that? And now I'm here. Legs like sandbags, heavy on the floor, stomach set to fly out. But vomit will not stop the dragon. God knows it might make him laugh or spit. It's the handle of the sword, heavy too. But here's where I tell myself, you will move your sandbag legs. You will keep your lunch down. You will look at him now full hot in the face and swing hard. You know you can do that because you must. Ooh, I totally believe that. I believe that character. The sandbag legs are very vivid, aren't they? We can all relate to that feeling of being like almost rooted to the spot with fear, but yet knowing we cannot stand still, we've got to act, we've got to move. Also, I think it's really realistic to bring in that kind of almost regurgitate, almost regurgitation <laughs> as you're facing fear like that. Well, absolutely, it's sickening to the stomach. And yes, we could just breeze past that because it's not a very savory detail, but it's not very, you know, we're not going for realism in a, no a novel, but we are going for naturalism. And that's what that brings to it. And then we've got the intellectual and the emotional response. And because you've hit all those three, despite the fact that you're slaying a dragon after you've just been to Little, I'm sorry, what's going on? Like, I believe this character's feelings and emotions as they face that scenario. So well done. Fun. And I, this is just to show, I mean, I made those up off the top of my head before this session, just kind of being as silly as I possibly could be. Um, and I like to mix it up a little bit, you know, to, it, it, with, with each class so they get slightly different scenarios, which just goes to show that you can be as silly as you want to be in your writing. And why have I given you such silly scenarios? Because if you enjoy something, you will keep coming back to the page again and again and again. If it feels like a chore, you probably won't do any writing. But if you enjoy it, no matter how silly it might be then you will keep doing it. Thank you so much, Phyllis. And I felt quite moved listening to that, knowing the context. So thank you for sharing that too and, and, and trusting us with that. I appreciate it. Um, Gordon, would you mind unmuting? Yes. <laughs> Which fear was it? Which was it? Fear or triumph, sorry? Uh, fear. Okay. Yeah. And so are you happy to read us a bit of what you wrote? Uh, just a bit. I didn't write that much. But okay, that's okay. Uh, yeah, so... My back felt cold despite the heat in the air. My arms were shaking, although I did feel power. I stared into the dragon's eyes and he stared right back at me. I looked around, everyone else was hiding, expecting me to tackle the big fire spitting beast on my own. I knew I had to act first before the dragon got me. Wonderful. Well done. You're doing something very sophisticated, particularly in that opening um, sentences, is you're putting two opposite ideas um, next to each other. So, um, you know, when you're talking about just read the first couple of sentences again, Gordon. Sorry. Just the first couple My of sentences. My back felt cold despite the heat. In cold the and heat. Yeah. OK, so that's so we call that juxtaposition. And it's when two opposites are pushed close together in a sentence. If they were pushed right next to each other, they would be called an oxymoron, but they're not. They're in the same sentence, so we call it juxtaposition. And it's a Shakespearean technique, believe it or not. It is used a lot throughout Shakespeare's work. He pushes opposites together all the time because it gets us to reconsider those concepts, what they mean to us. And also when you've got things that are, that are sensory, like you chose, cold and heat, it helps us visualize something really clearly. So it was a really strong opening. I, I Again, I totally bought this character. I could completely see, that, especially the eye to eye with the dragon part. I was like, oh my goodness, like it felt very real to me, even though I know it's a silly scenario that I made up. Uh, so thank you for sharing that, just brilliant. And lastly, I think we've got time for one more person. So would Murray mind unmuting? Yep. Uh, which so one did I, you choose? I chose fear. Oh, we all and... chose fear. <laughs> <laughs> 
oh, let's just breeze past that and not pull at what that means. Let's just continue. So, um, so Murray, um, are you happy to read us just a bit of your fear story? Great. Yep. So I wrote, I can't move. I'm truly frozen. All I can feel is the heat radiating from my body and the hair stood up in the back of my neck. Never did I possibly imagine, but I popped into Little for cheap champagne so that I would be face to face with what I could only describe as something from a Lord of the Rings movie. Nothing makes sense anymore, and I have no idea what will come next. Wonderful, thank you. You've used the same technique as Gordon with the freezing, freezing to the spot and the heat. Isn't that interesting? How those things have kind of uh, bubbled to the surface in this particular scenario, even though we're all writing in our own little bubble. So it's interesting that, isn't it? Um, so that worked really well in immersing us. And then what was excellent as well is that you drew in some references from our world. So now we know something about this character as well as the scenario. We know that they're not from the world that they are have been thrown into, that they are not used to dragons being around, that they are used to sitting in front of the Lord of the Rings box set with the groceries they bought from, <laughs> with the party food they bought from Lidl. So that also gives us this kind of fish out of water feeling in the story. And so we immediately start to relate because we've all been in a scenario where we don't really know what to do and how to handle it. So it makes the character more relatable. Well done, really excellent. I've so enjoyed these responses and uh, apologies for those we haven't heard. I would have loved to have heard all of them, um, but we will get a chance to uh, look at more writing in the next session. So for now, we'll say thank you very much and uh, goodbye. <laughs>